Hello and welcome. In this problem involving a nozzle, we want to find the exit velocity and as well as the entropy generation in an actual nozzle. So I've already marked the inlet and exit state. State one is my inlet and about state inlet state, uh, a lot of information are supplied. State two is the ideal or isentropic exit state. Uh, that means not only the energy, flow energy remain constant, S2 must be equals S1 because it's isentropic. For state three, the exit temperature is supplied, uh, exit pressure is supplied, as well as exit area is supplied. So state three is my actual exit, nozzle exit state. So that's the area of the actual exit. For the isentropic exit, we don't know what A2 should be because isentropic nozzle probably shaped slightly differently. Okay, we'll use that information in calculating different states. Uh, by the way, the, uh, this is covered in uh, chapter four of your textbook. Uh, it's a single flow open device. So let's go and launch a suitable test step. We'll follow the test steps tree through open, steady, generic, single flow device. Click on the PG model for the gas model. And one suggestion is please go over the turbine problem first to prepare yourself for this nozzle problem, which is a little more complicated. Okay, the first thing first, so we go and pick the gas, which is CO2. And let's write down what is known about the problem. Uh, 200 kPa and 1500 Kelvin. And the velocity is given as five meter per second. But notice that's not sufficient to find m dot one. We can write the actual exit state, hoping that enough information is supplied for ex actual exit state. So we can write m dot one equals m dot three. That's our actual exit state. So we'll see. We'll come back to the state. For state two, which is 100 kPa, uh, that's the exit pressure. And what is given is, we don't know the velocity, it's isentropic, so better be S2 equals S1. And the energy equation says that J, the flow, specific flow energy must remain constant in a nozzle. So therefore, the exit isentropic velocity is already found. Notice that the mass flow rate is still not known, but the exit velocity of the isentropic nozzle, one of the desired answers, have been calculated. If you go to state three, the actual exit state, we know the pressure would be same as P2, given 100 kPa. Temperature is given as 1400 Kelvin. Velocity is unknown. And the area is given this time, 10 centimeters square. Oops, the temperature is 1400 Kelvin, but that's not enough to find the state because we haven't used the energy equation yet. J3 must be equals J1. And now, you can see that the velocity has been calculated as well as the mass flow rate. So therefore, if we go back to state two, we can write, of course, the mass flow rate might be same throughout the nozzle, whether it's isentropic or, uh, or actual nozzle. And state one, we already put the equation there. So now all the states are fully calculated. In the graphics panel, you can see state three should be to the right of state two because of all this entropy generation in the TS diagram. Okay, if you go to the device panel, uh, we have already sort of found most of the answers, but let's analyze the isentropic nozzle. What do we expect? One and two are the inlet and exit. We set them up, CO2 is coming in here, going out. Uh, we know it's, uh, there's no, absolutely no work transfer. So now, if we use the energy equation, which is shown here, J1 and J2 has been calculated. We just now enter W dot external to be zero. So the energy equation will force Q dot to be zero. So let's see if it is true or not. And that shows the integrity of our solution. And of course the entropy generation should be zero too because it's isentropic, Q dot equals zero. And entropies are equal, therefore S dot gen is obviously zero. There is no agent to generate entropy. Device two is our actual nozzle operating between one and three. Again, if we repeat the process, we'll see Q dot is zero as expected. Uh, and the entropy generation rate has been found here uh, in kilowatt per Kelvin. So 
we have kind of found all the answers. And if you go to the IEO panel, and suppose we are interested to find the isentropic efficiency of the nozzle. We can go isolate only the user codes. And let's, what is isentropic efficiency? It is the uh, kinetic energy of the actual exit divided by the kinetic energy of the isentropic exit. So Ke at 3, we know we don't have a variable Ke3, so I'm defining one, should be J3 minus H3. If you go to the definition of what is J, J is H plus Ke plus Pe, and Pe is zero in this problem, so this should isolate Ke3. We could also do velocity square by 2000 if we wanted. It will give the same answer, but this is a lot easier. So we found the kinetic energy at the exit of at, at state 3 and 2, so therefore efficiency of the nozzle, eta n, suppose we define a variable, is simply Ke Ke3, the actual kinetic energy at the exit divided by the isentropic kinetic energy of the exit. So the isentropic effici efficiency of the nozzle is found to be about 46.4%. So this is just to show how IO panel can be used for, uh, for secondary calculations. A supercalculate will redo all the calculations and generate the test codes, which we can use later on to reproduce the solution. and we could also use variables. In the future, we'll solve problem where we'll declare variable in the I.O. panel and use them inside the state panel or device panel uh, to make parametric study a whole lot simpler.